All right. Welcome. Glad to be here this afternoon. And I'm going to give you a little talk on how marketers have to understand SaaS technology. And so let me go next. I'm going to do this myself here. So marketers have to have their head in the cloud. That's to say, what happened to marketing? Marketing was all about a creative enterprise. And that creative enterprise was making interesting stories come alive through different mediums. But now marketing has become fused and interconnected with technology. And so your, your average marketer today is, is not someone who is just a customer champion or a brand storyteller or a revenue growth driver or a capability builder or a technologist or an innovator or a data guru. The marketer has to be all of those. And that was never expected. In the old days, marketing was making a TV ad, finding a TV show, putting it on the air. Today, marketing is more performance driven. It's about reaching people where they spend time. It's about getting the right ad to the right person at the right time, which re requires incredible synchronization across technology. So marketers have to adapt. If they don't adapt, they become obsolete. They get left behind. How many marketers do you know who are out of a job because they didn't understand technology? How many companies do you know where the people who didn't understand technology then had to, are then basically replaced with a new kind of CMO? Now, in order to be successful in technology, you have to adopt a Shark Tank mentality. And what do I mean by that? You have to really experiment with technology to really understand what it can do and where it can be used. So I run a company called Stagwell today. We have 14,000 people in 34 countries. And that company is a digital first marketing company. And what we do with everybody is we say once a year, no matter who you are, no matter what your job is, think about the best technology innovation that you could come up with and submit it into a contest. And if you win the contest, we will give you a million dollars of development money. I don't think there's any other company that allows anybody to enter. And we've been incredibly successful with that process and created what you'll see is a suite of products. So before I go into a couple of the products, let me give you a word of caution about marketing and about technology and about engineering. Just because you build it doesn't mean people are going to come. We've managed to pick up some great technology because people spent, I think in one case, 10 million, in another case, $70 million. And we picked them up for a fraction of what was spent on development. Why? Because they didn't have all of the prerequisites to get their product to market. As I always say, the only ad they could get on 3,500 screens on airports was your ad could appear here. Now at Stagwell, we have 4,000 advertisers. So we were able to sell immediately millions and millions of dollars of advertising, 50 to $100 million of advertising on the same screens because we had really thought about how you get to market. And so the point that I make is, if you're planning a technology product, if you're trying to come up with that next innovation that is going to make you incredibly successful, first, you have to identify a market opportunity. Second, you have to be able to build it. Third, 
okay, it's great you built it, but does it really work? Do you have a testing environment? My son, for example, has a company called M. Taylor that uses your phone to take your measurements and then delivers custom clothes. He's now had hundreds of thousands of people go through his app. So he has had the testing ground to identify exactly what works and what doesn't. Now, there's a pricing model. You have to be able to get money for what you're doing in some way, shape, or form, and you have to get access to the market. And the point that I make, and I see this time and time again, good engineering alone won't get you there. Every one of these things is required. Now, in the marketing space, what are the two areas where technology often proves effective? Well, when well-educated, high-value professionals are wasting their time on busy work, doing the same thing over and over again, filling out timesheets, whatever the routine task is, formatting documents, that isn't worth the hundred or two hundred dollars an hour that they're being paid, that's where technology can come in and be highly valuable. And the second is complex processes done by hand that can become automated processes, particularly in these days, media buying. I'd look in those two areas. And you know what? There's big money in those areas. There's 64 billion in comms tech. There's 67 billion in CX software. There's $150 billion in media software. These are tremendous areas where innovations count. Now, we get about 30 entries in the Shark Tank put together by teams. These are some of the losers, so that you understand not all good ideas make it. One group said, hey, we're going to let people specify like a dog and a ball, and it'll make new AI content. Okay, I said that was great, but there are unfortunately like 100 people doing that one, and we're never going to be able to do it because it's already being done. Then somebody else said, you know what? We're going to really measure when ads are tired and people are fatigued of seeing them. I said, that's great. It's really just a feature. It's not really a product. And by the way, we're really interested in the ads that are super successful, not so much ad fatigue. And then third, somebody said, okay, let's create a spot where we gather all the information about individual products and we put it together. And I said, that's great, but Amazon's already done that. So these were the ones that didn't win. Now let me tell you about the ones that won. So the Harris brand terminal was one from two or three years ago. Right now, it, it has 130 clients two years later. What does it do? It enables people to see data about their own brand and five or six other brands across 20 different variables on a real-time, continuous basis. And to see it in an easy-to-use terminal, and if they see something interesting, they press a button and it prints it out. They could run into their boss and say, here's the latest finding. And this has proven incredibly successful. It sells typically for about $50,000 a year. So it's got a good revenue model. We've got a price for it. It's got a clientele, market researchers. It's well engineered to the user, simple, easy to use. It has something people want, data in real-time basis focused on their individual product. This was a winner. It's going to be a big winner. Right now, it grew 100% last year. I'm pretty confident it's going to grow 100% next year and 100% the year after. The next one was a significant winner called Around. Around is our augmented reality product. Now, the winner came in with a general idea, let's do augmented reality everywhere. And I said, we're not going to do it everywhere. People don't like augmented reality everywhere. Let's find a place 
where people would adapt augmented reality? The answer we came up with was stadiums. It turns out that in a typical two-hour baseball game or two-hour football game, there's maybe 20 minutes of actual action and that fans are sitting around there for the rest of the time, and they can eat only so many hot dogs, consume only so many beers. And so they have a lot of time, and then a lot of people bring their kids, and their kids are super bored. So what we said was, well, in a stadium, augmented reality would be viral, because if somebody else is holding their phone up, you say, hey, what is that person doing? And so, on August 22nd, we debuted this with the Minnesota Twins. The fans loved it because they could see a whole new playing field on top of the field, and they could play fantasy games with the other people sitting in the stands. For the LA Rams, we held the largest snowball fight in history where people could throw snowballs at each other. And of course, we can have sponsors because we've created a whole new field and we'll have a home version. This went from one stadium to six stadiums, and I know there are 2,118 stadiums in the world that this has a market in. And so we are off to the races with the Around product. You can download the app, it's fascinating. Then let me focus a little bit on a third product that we've got called Profit. <clears throat> this really is in the communications or public relations field. What was the idea here? Let's really automate and simplify and use AI to assist those people who are working on the basic PR tasks. What are those basic tasks? Well, let's start with a release. Here's a typical release. It's up there, right? McDonald's smoky BLT quarter pounder with cheese and Oreo fledged Mc sorry are the it pair of the season. All right, start with that news release. Person wrote it, you insert it into profit. What does profit do with that? Well, what profit does is it analyzes the release and it analyzes what every newscaster, reporter, and podcaster, and so forth has written on related fields, and it determines who is most likely to cover it process that might have taken somebody hours takes a minute. And up comes the list of the likely people who are going to cover this news release, how many people uh, you know, they're associated with, how powerful it will be, and whether they're likely to report it positively or negatively. After all, you don't want to pitch your news release about Oreo McFlurries to, to a, that, a group that says we don't want sugar. Wouldn't work out very well. So. It has to really understand the effective. All right, so now let's pick out a particular journalist, right, from the New Yorker. This would be the one, drill down, and then let's begin to craft a pitch to that journalist, right? And we know that there's an 85% probability that if we get to that journalist, it will be positive. Okay. So now, in order to improve our release, let's have generative AI come in and change the tone of the release. Let's make a pitch out of this release. So it used to say, McDonald's smoky BLT quarter pounder with cheese and Oreo are the it pair. Generative AI has rewritten it. It says opposites attract. McDonald's new smoky BLT and Oreo fudge McFlurry. Experience love at first bite. It's more clever. Yeah, it's, it's actually improved, and it knows what pitch is likely to work with the journalist because it's attuned to the language that the journalist uses. Okay, let's change the tone. Let's be a little bit more professional instead of persuasive. Again, generative AI has rewritten it. Treat yourself to McDonald's delicious new smoky BLT and Oreo fudge McClurry. So now the pitch has been written. And by the way, let's have generative AI write a bunch of social posts. Love is in the air. McDonald's BLT quarter pounder with cheese, Oreo fudge. 
Let's post all those. And let's send the pitch out. So now we've rewritten the release, we've done the pitches, we've figured out who the journalists are, we've sent out the pitches, we've now taken what was probably six hours of time and made it into one. That's an incredible savings. Thousands of people are now signing up for this particular product. In the Sabre Rewards, it recently won number one out of 150 different products in the ComTech area. And again, we have access to the market. We have tuned this to what people actually do. We have adapted the latest AI and generative AI technologies. And this didn't show up yesterday. This was two years in the planning to really get to market. So if you're a marketer, I want you to get your head in the cloud. I want you to get it with profit. You can get more information there. If you've got the next great product you think marketers are going to adapt, I want you to come to Stagwell. Come pitch it to us. We're an incredible incubator for products because we have the right combination of engineering, of access to the market. I was chief strategy officer of Microsoft, so I will kick the tires on your ideas. And I think this is what it really takes for marketers, designers, and engineers to be successful if you want to combine technology and marketing today. Thank you.